Hi, I'm Mark Powers. Welcome to This Old House. If you're looking for a way to encourage your kids to tidy up, make them a bookcase with shelves they can reach and a row of cubbies for toys or shoes. We built ours out of stair treads and pine boards and set it on casters to make it easy to move. Check out the cut list and dimensional drawing on this webpage before picking up your materials. Remember that you might have to special order the stair treads to get the right length. To get started, take the piece for the base. Mark a cut line and clamp it down. Now you can rip it to width. While you have the circular saw out, rip the rest of the boards to width according to the cut list. Next, cut all the pine parts to length. Here's a tip to help you make an accurate cut. Mark your measurement, hold the saw blade up to your pencil line, then mark the board again along the shoe of the saw. Carry that line across the width of the board, and now you know where to clamp your straight edge. Run the saw against it to make an accurate cut. Use the diagram online to make the angled cuts for the cubby. We inset the back panel of the bookcase in a groove, also called a rabbit, cut into the sides. We use the trim router to make the rabbits, but you could also use a circular saw and a chisel. Mark a rabbit 3 8 of an inch deep and 1 quarter inch wide on one edge of a side piece. Chuck a straight cutting bit into the router and use your marks to adjust the depth of the bit. Set the straight edge tight to the router's base, but don't lock it in place yet. Use the combo square to check that the straight edge is the same distance away at each end. Clamp the straight edge in place. Start the router, then set it against the straight edge and push it forward along the right side of your workpiece so that the bit bites into the wood. Router bits always spin clockwise. Route both side pieces and the cubby ends. Then paint all the pine parts, leaving the end grain unfinished. To start the upper cabinets, first mark lines 3 quarters of an inch in from each end of the stair treads on both faces. Prop up the treads with some of the material for the back. Then, to keep the oak from splitting, drill three pilot holes. They should be evenly spaced across the treads, starting about one inch in from the front and back edges. Keep the holes about 3 eighths of an inch inside the pencil lines. Once both treads are drilled, stain them and let them dry. Stand the top tread upright with a scrap of back material underneath it as a spacer. Grab one of the side pieces, add a bead of construction adhesive to the end grain. Instead of fussing with a tape measure to inset the side piece, use a 3 quarter inch thick piece of scrap as a spacer. Repeat the process for the other side piece. Attach the bottom tread the same way. Now for the shelves and dividers. Use the dividers to help you center the shelf. Just remember to keep the spacers beneath the rear edge of the shelf. Screw through the side piece and into the edge of the shelf on one end, then reset the dividers at the other end and repeat. Now, mark the locations for the shelf dividers and use a rafter square to hold them perpendicular while you screw them in place. Mark the location of the dividers on the treads with the rafter square and fasten them through the oak. With the cabinet finished, set it aside. Okay, on to the cubbies. Divide the base into thirds and mark it. Flip the base over so the marks face down and attach the cubby ends with screws, keeping the front edge flush with the base. Rotate the base onto its front edge and attach the cubby dividers using the lines as a guide. Once the first screw is in, check that the divider is square to the base. Add the second cubby divider the same way. Now attach the fascia. Screw into the cubby ends first, then the cubby dividers. Use the rafter square again to make sure the dividers are square. Time to join the cabinet to the cubbies. Metal brackets connect the two halves. Use pan head screws to attach the bracket flush with the top of the cubby ends. Position the cabinet on top of the cubbies and use a scrap of pine as a spacer to adjust it left to right. Make sure the back edge is lined up with the rabbit. Reach through the back of the cubbies to screw the bracket to the underside of the lower tread. Let's add the back. Dry fit the back and hold it in place while you mark the accent paint areas with a pencil. Pop the back off and paint the accent color. Go outside the lines a bit to ensure total coverage. Paint everything else white. Once the piece dries, drop it into the rabbits and fasten it with pan head screws. Hit each corner and place several more screws between those. All that's left are the casters. Hold the caster at the corner and mark the carriage bolt holes. Drill the hole with a quarter inch bit. Thread each bolt through from the inside of the cabinet. Add the caster, the lock washers, and nuts. Then tighten the hardware with a wrench. Install the other three casters. 
flip the bookcase over and wheel it into your kid's room.